Hi, welcome to your next big boy lab. Uh, about <laughs> resistance and current. Here we go. Whoop. Remember, there's a lab quiz to follow this lab. Okay, here's your reminders. Do you have the laminated sheet? Have you read the procedures? Well, if not, go do it. Pause this video and get the laminated sheet and read the procedures. Now that you've read the procedures, you probably still have the background information about George Ohm. Back in the 1800s, back when Miss Burkhart was born, mm -hmm. he was doing a bunch of labs and he demonstrated that voltage, current, and resistance are actually related. At first, they thought they were like three separate like entities, but now we know that as one of those two changes, the other two are affected. And he developed this whole law, and there's the equation down here. Voltage equals current times resistance. So if you know current and resistance, you can calculate the voltage. And if you know current and voltage, you can calculate resistance. And a really cool thing about George Ohm also is he is Miss Miller's grandpa. <laughs> what? Okay, experimental design diagram. Do you have that paper? We're going to walk you through each piece. Now, appreciate this time with us. I know it's a long lab video, but appreciate this time with us because eventually you do this thing all by your lonesome. All by yourself. Don't want to be. Okay. So, problem statement <laughs> up at the very top there. You already have this on the laminated sheet, so this should have been relatively easy for you to fill in. Um, but your IV here is the resistance. That's what you're going to change. And your oh, DV like is going to be the current. So the current. current is going to be affected by you changing the resistance. There you go. Okay. Okay, we're going to skip all the way down to your hypothesis. We know that we're changing the resistance. Let's say we're going to increase the resistance. What is going to happen to this, the current? In this line here, you're going to fill in either it, you think the current will decrease as you increase the resistance, do you think the current is going to increase as you increase resistance, or do you think the current is going to stay the same? Remember, current is the flow of charges, mm -hmm. just like current in a river is the flow of water. Current in a circuit is the flow of the electrons. Great. Back up to independent variable, you probably should be able to figure this out because you kind of like label, like fill in two lines with it. But for this, we'll help you. The independent variable is the resistance mm -hmm. in a circuit. And then your levels of your IV are already entered there for you. So you're changing by adding more bulbs, that's what's changing your resistance. Okay, yeah. remember we talked about how bulbs, motors, fans, all those are called resistors. Oh, for okay. a reason. And then your control there is your zero light bulb. So this is what's going to give us our baseline. Remember, control is a big heavy hitter for us this year. So you're going to get really good at identifying the control. And then your dependent variable, which you already have in your problem statement, but just to help you out again, is going to be your current. Okay, and specifically, you're changing the strength of the current. Okay. I'm going to say amount because it's easier to write. Okay. AMT means amount. Amount of current. Notice for independent variable, we did not write number of bulbs here. The number of bulbs did change the resistance. So we're focusing on the big boy scientific way of saying it. So we're saying resistance instead of number of bulbs. When you take your lab quiz, we expect you to be able to articulate resistance. Mm -hmm. We're expecting a lot from you. Okay, constant conditions. We want five, but we, how many do you want to give this time? Last time we gave three. I think we give two. Okay, it's getting trickier and trickier. Remember, we're not listing equipment and tools. We need to assume that all tools and equipment are made the same and that when we do use our ammeter, this is just like saying ruler for constant condition. We need to assume every ruler maker made the rulers the same. Ammeters, that's a measurement tool. So we're not going to use that as a constant condition because we need to assume goodwill with Mr. Ammeter Maker. Mm -hmm. But we do need to keep consistent. Um, we actually have you using a lot of wires. And as you add more wires, you do change the resistance. So I want to make sure you always keep the same number of wires. Yep, that's a good one wires. And I think that number is one, two, three, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, what else do we need to keep the same? Um, we need to make sure we use the same number of batteries. Oh, yeah. So the number of energy sources you have. 
Let me write batteries or energy sources. Uh, let's write batteries since that's what you're writing. <laughs> um, if you're struggling with your constant conditions, remember constant conditions need to be very specific. So there's a lot of other things about the wires that need to be the same. Okay. Um, so go there first if and you're struggling. What about the batteries that stay the same? And yep. you've done enough experiments with our light bulbs, you probably notice we have different shapes of bulbs that shine different amounts, which use different amount of electricity. So maybe think of those as choices. Good luck. Okay, before you go on though, you need to bring this to us to show us your constant conditions. I agree. We wanna see your constant conditions, okay? Yep. So we can make sure that you're on the right track. Okay, when you are done with that, you'll get your supplies. You'll need battery inside the holder. Whenever, we never write battery holder on the materials, but just assume. You need your ammeter. Ammeter, our ammeters are black, and it says milliampers on however you say that word. That's our ammeter. You need six connecting wires. Remember, the color doesn't make a difference. It's just the color of dye they put on the, the rubber insulator. But just six wires and four bulbs inside their respective holders. Okay, your procedures. We're going to kind of go through this a little bit with you since this lab's a little trickier than other labs. Your ammeter is really hard to kind of connect. So if you look at the diagram that we drew down here, it matches this. There's that random piece of wood connecting two little, what are those doohickeys called, screws or bolts? Yeah. Those are where you put your wires to. The this ones is the next most to the wood. important part of all the things that go wrong in this lab. It's your connection to your ammeter. So it should look like this. The top and bottom one will be empty. They're lonely and that's fine. I think those two are actually for structural purposes. It keeps the ammeter together. You just need to use the side to side one. Mm -hmm. So the biggest problem that we, do you hit this in the next one? It's the next procedure in this one. Okay, so go on. So now you're gonna keep linking the rest of the wires to it. You need to make sure that you connect the wires with the metal alligator clips. They can't be touching the insulated part because the current won't go through it. So oh, metal to metal. They hook in together. And I only okay. grab two wires because it's so big when you have six. So. And once your circuit is complete, if you notice that the needle on your ammeter is going negative, so it's going below zero, then you need to take... So here's what it looks like when it's going below zero. See it? What so in do? order to fix that, you're going to take your alligator clips from their spots and you're just going to switch their places and it will give you a positive reading. Yep. Ta-da! Now, um, you have the electrons flowing in the ammeter backwards. And the ammeter's like, what the heck? Ding! Negative. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's also a number two mistake in this lab. After that, it's pretty simple. You have no light bulbs. You just have six wires and one gigantic loop. No light bulbs. So you're going to write that number down in your data table. And then, step four, you're going to add a bulb. Bam! I added a bulb right there between those two wires. I'm going to write that down for one bulb in trial one. And then you continue on. For trial one, see, trial one right here, I'm going to add bulb, no bulbs, then one bulb, two bulb, three bulb, four bulb. Then I take them all out. Trial two, zero bulbs. Trial two, one bulb, two bulb, three bulb, four bulb. And then take them all out. Trial three, one bulb, two bulb, three bulb, four bulb. A lot of kids get tempted to do one bulb three times in a row, but when you do that, you could have had the same mistake three times in a row. You need to clear it all, start over. That's why we're asking you to take it, do one, two, three, four, take them out. Zero, one, two, three, four again. Yep. Okay, so this is your data table challenge, kids. You're at the point now where we're going to start copying your data table. Ignore this extra line that's going across computers. Um, you should you be using a ruler or regular kits for now? We are providing them. Enjoy it while it lasts. Okay, I would also set up the graph while you have us on video. Remember that IV does go across and DV goes down, so I just put the IV here, amount of mm -hmm. resistance. Our unit is number of bulbs. Yep. The amount of current is our dv 
And then our units is milliamperes, and the abbreviation for milliamperes is a small a, or small m, capital A. Yep. And then the effect of the IV on the DV. Again, you have to write these words over and over again. And then our zero is in the corner, ready to go. Mm -hmm. So when if I have zero bulbs, that is a number, I will graph that spot, and he's going to be somewhere on this line, like right there-ish. I don't know. It depends where my numbers are. And remember that because your IV is numbers, one bulb, two bulb, three bulb, four bulb, it's going to be a line graph. So you're going to have dots, and you're going to connect the dots. When we do our line, when we do our graph, and go back here, we are graphing only the averages. We always graph the averages only, not each individual trial. So you will have five dots on this graph, and you'll connect them with a line. If you don't connect them, it's not a line graph. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you will graph the results when you're done, then you... Include your, or you write your conclusion. So remember, three things you have to have in your conclusion. We're being very ELA here. You're going to make <laughs> your claim. Okay, so this is kind of your answer to your problem statement. So as the resistance increased, what did you see happen? And then you're going to include evidence. Your evidence has to have data, so specific numbers from what you collected. And then you got to tell us whether or not your hypothesis was supported. Remember, do not use words like correct, incorrect, right, or wrong. Nope, that's not correct to do. And then don't forget to come see us if you have any questions. And then you have to take a lab quiz when you're done with us. Yep. All right. Hasta la vista. Baby.